let's pick up where I left off in my water margin video. Wu Song is the most popular figure from the classic Chinese novel Shui Hua Zhuan. He's played in several Shaw Brothers films by my favorite Shaw's actor, T. Lung, so I'm naturally inclined to like him. But his mystique for Chinese people is, I'll admit, a little beyond my comprehension. I get people loving Sun Wukong as a cute trickster, or Guan Yu as the paragon of virtuous loyalty, or Zhuge Liang as the cleverest man of all time, or even Jia Baoyu as a lovelorn underachiever. But Wu Song? He's a great fighter and impeccably honest, even writing a confession in his own blood on a wall after slaughtering dozens of men. But out of the 108 Gangshan bandits, why is Wu Song most people's number one? And why do the Shaws alone do four movies telling his story, plus cameos in other films? The answer is two-pronged. On the one hand, Wu Song's story is stacked with startling imagery. He gains his fame by barehandedly slaying a wild tiger, which is pretty metal. He's utterly devoted to his elder brother, a sad, ugly dwarf, and he can drink gallons of booze. He eventually dons an iconic disguise as a Buddhist pilgrim, so he's always easy to spot in Chinese art. The second reason Wu Song is so popular is, well, let's call it containment release. You can't talk about Wu Song without mentioning Pan Jin Lian, his sister-in-law, the ultimate villainess who also sexes up every narrative. She's not the only unfaithful wife in the novel who gets her violent comeuppance, but she's the one who spawned not just movies devoted to her, but also a colossally important spin-off novel. We'll get to that in a moment. First, let's talk about Wu Song and the two Shaw Brothers films devoted to his backstory, The Amorous Lotus Pan and Tiger Killer. The 1983 film Tiger Killer, the last filmed of the Shaw Brothers Shui Hu adaptations, was weirdly filmed 11 years after its own sequel, Delightful Forest, when T. Lung was getting a bit too old to play a naive Wu Song. To put this in perspective, he played Chow Yun Fat's worn out elder brother about three years later in A Better Tomorrow. I applaud the Shaws, though, for giving T. Lung's Wu Song one last hurrah that captured the most popular elements of his story. Wu Song was raised by his elder brother, an ugly street vendor. After a barroom brawl, Wu Song skips town for a while, and when he returns, he finds that the mountain pass to get home is guarded by a vicious tiger. He gets loaded on an infamously potent local hooch and heads over the mountain to get home. Tiger or no tiger? Well, of course, tiger. He beats the crud out of that tiger. Or rather, an animal trainer wrestles the tiger, and T. Lung punches out a taxidermied animal. Wu Song is welcomed home as a hero, and he's made the town constable. But things have changed back home. His brother is inexplicably married to a flirtatious beauty, Pan Jin Lian, who wastes little time in trying to come on to Wu Song. Incensed, Wu Song warns his brother to watch his wife very carefully and heads out of town. When Wu Song returns, Wu Da Lang is dead, and everyone seems to know why. Wu Song investigates. He's not exactly Sherlock Holmes, but once his suspicions are confirmed, he murders Pan Jin Lian, her lover Simon Ching, and their go-between. Then, as an honorable man, um, he turns himself into the police for due process. Tiger Killer is focused on being the definitive Wu Song film, and many acclaim T. Lung's performance in it. Personally, I find Ku Feng's performance as Wu Da Lang as the highlight. He is a crushingly pathetic figure, a massive fan of his little brother and proud of his hot but low-life bride. Ku Feng is just one of those actors who makes everything better when he shows up. He's unrecognizable here, the usually typecast supervillain disappearing into a desperate sweetheart of a man. The movie also goes out of its way to give an empathetic backstory to Pan Jin Lian. Sleazy, but empathetic. Her previous employer raped her, but was caught in the act by his wife. The wife has Pan sold off to Wu Da Lang as punishment. This sequence doesn't really work since we're invited to simultaneously pity Pan Jin Lian and also enjoy the camera's lustful gaze on her body. Thankfully, this is only a brief segment of the film. The Shaw's earlier shot of this story, The Amorous Lotus Pan, was made back in 1964, when the studio's hottest hits were light opera Huang Mei Diao and historical epics. Amorous Lotus Pan fits that era, skipping over the actual tiger fight and, as the title implies, putting the focus on Pan Jin Lian herself instead of Wu Song. It kind of works, although the actors playing Wu Song and Wu Da Lang don't hold a candle to Ti Lung or Ku Feng. As Pan Jin Lian, Chang Chung Wen is more stately and beautiful than the gum-chewing Wang Peng. Whose career is nothing to sneeze at. Playing Pan as a lower class victim, clawing for social position and self respect is a choice. And Wang Ping shows admirable range in what could be a thankless role. And that brings us to. Water Margin was a major hit in the 1500s, so it's no surprise that in 1610 a spin off novel appeared, Jingping Mei, which tells the story of Pan Jin Lian, with, with Wu Song appearing only as a bookend character on each side of its sprawling narrative, is a unique work. It is an intricate, politically charged indictment of the upper classes and society in general. 
It's also a book with a handful of very explicit erotic passages. Naturally, its current reputation, well known but banned in the PRC, inspiring who knows how many smutty film adaptations, relies heavily on those erotic passages, which in my opinion is a shame since it's nearly as well written as China's quote greatest novel, Dream of the Red Chambers, and it does not demand, unlike Red Chambers, that you sympathize with its depraved characters. The Shahs jumped onto this with The Golden Lotus in 1976, which intentionally misses the point and glorifies the sexy side of Pan Jin Lian and Xiamen Qing's affair. I don't have much to say about this or the other softcore adaptations of Jinping Mei, other than it's a real shame to waste a great work of literature on the lowest common denominator smut. Also that this was one of Jackie Chan's first credited roles as the street urchin who betrays Pan and her lover to Wu Song. So yeah, containment release. There is a theory, a pretty hard one to debate, that society designs pockets where we can indulge in bad behavior to get it out of our systems. I'm not talking about the purge here. I'm talking about Mardi Gras or sexy Halloween costumes or Las Vegas. You do it, it's deemed okay in that situation, and then it stays in Vegas. I think the fascination with Pan Jin Lian is containment release. She's sexy, she's bad, we indulge in her sins, and then she is conveniently beheaded by a valiant hero, and we of course are on his side, and we have been for the last 90 minutes, right? Right? I mean, I wasn't turned on by any of that stuff. And no, no, I'm not going to watch this with my dad. As I mentioned earlier, Pan Jin Lian has become a byword in China for a lustful, adulterous villainess. Her cultural cachet hasn't carried over cultural borders, with occasionally comic results. There's an excellent 2016 drama, Wubusha Pan Jin Lian, starring Fan Bingbing in perhaps her greatest role ever, and the title was translated into English as I Am Not Madame Bovary, which left most Western cinephiles scratching their heads trying to remember the details about Madame Bovary and why anybody would ever say that. Come on, China. We can learn in the West. Just call it I'm not Pan Jin Lian. 1972's Delightful Forest, which is a gem, picks up where Tiger Killer, Amorous Lotus Pan, and Golden Lotus left off. Wu Song has killed Pan Jin Lian and Simon Ching, and he turns himself in for due punishment. Wu Song gets moved from prison to prison, allowing director Chang Che to paint a portrait of corrupted justice, where there are some honest cops, some dishonest cops, some truly evil judges, and some iffy judges who make iffy decisions. Contrary to what one would expect, there is neither delight nor forest in this picture. The delightful forest is a town that thrives on gambling and prostitution, whose governor has been supplanted by a local gangster and some corrupt politicians. Wu Song is recruited by the previous owner to clean up the town, and from there it becomes very much a Sergio Leone style punch out. In some ways, Delightful Forest mirrors Pursuit, which I discussed in my previous review, both about an honest guy who just can't catch a break. And these two films feature what I'll call Kang Fu, with heroes defending themselves using their own pillories as a weapon. There's a whole branch of martial arts dedicated to fighting as though your hands were tied, the Wu Song Breaks Manacles style. Delightful Forest is somewhat charming. Wu Song defends his honorable police escort against brigands who drug them, and then he befriends the brigands, who will eventually join him at Liangshan. But it also bubbles over with rage at the injustice of the justice system. Bribes, unnecessary torture, police brutality, framed patsies, all of this is universal, and the Wu Song movies have cousins in film noir and neorealism across the western world. Back in the 1500s, Water Margin was already trying to prove that injustice is bred into systems. Like most Chinese novels, it blamed the long ago Song Dynasty, and not the current government, but the subtext was pretty clear. Water Margin ends with the Liangshan heroes granted pardons, and then sent on suicide missions until all but two are dead, and one of those two poisoned both of them, to spare them imperial humiliation. Thanks for hanging out through this pair of reviews, which handle 9 plus films. If you don't have time to read a 2,000 page novel, but can wade through 15 hours of classic Hong Kong films, here's the viewing order. The Three Sinners, Pursuit, Tiger Killer and the Amorous Lotus Pan, The Golden Lotus, The Delightful Forest, Water Margin, All Men Are Brothers, and Trilogy of Swordsmanship. And somewhere in there, The Bride Napping, which is only loosely affiliated. That's a lot of viewing. Fans of the book will both be happy to see these stories on screen starring classic Hong Kong stars, and a little frustrated with changes made for cinematic effect. Casual viewers are probably fine just watching Delightful Forest and Water Margin, which in my opinion are the best of the lot. As for myself, well, I'm a completist, and I don't call this channel the obsessive for nothing. I think it's all worthwhile, but, you know, pick and choose as you like.